Hello, welcome to the Eugenics Podcast. I'm Patrick Merricks. I'm Marius Turda. Good morning, Marius. How are you doing? Good morning, Patrick. I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? I'm perfect, thanks. We're su surviving the heat wave, so ready to talk about eugenics again. So um, today we're talking about a very topical uh, subject, the birth control and Planned Parenthood. So this is, uh, as always, based on some uh, recent news articles. So here we have this um, developing movement sort of against uh, Margaret Sanger, a birth control advocate and uh, some would say pioneer, but also connected to eugenics. So um, who was Sanger? We see the movement continuing uh, of certain institutions um, distancing themselves from their own controversial past. Now, in this particular case, uh, Margaret Sanger was actually the founder and the main figure of Planned Parenthood uh, movement and birth control movement in America. So this is quite a bold, bold move on behalf of the organization in New York to remove the name, considering that she's the founder. So, um... Let's look at a little overview of, of, of Sanger. So um, her involvement in birth control, uh, some of the you know, important moments and publications. So what do we have here? She's certainly an icon and she's canonized by women activists and by feminists. And she's also um, criticized uh, by others who see her involvement with eugenics and racism as very problematic. Um, but if we look at her life and her activities, it's, it's, it's utterly impressive. I, um, C.P. Blacker, the, the, the secretary of the British Eugenic Society, mentioned at some point in, uh, in a text he wrote um, in 1966 uh, on the occasion of uh, Sanger's death, that if we look at back at the 20th century and we look at the population explosion of the 20th century, as he called it, uh, there's one person will, will, will always mention and it's one person whose activities will, will refer to, and this is Margaret Sanger. He put Sanger on the same level with someone like Lenin or, or Stalin or Hitler in terms of shaping the, the, the 20th century. So if we look at her life, we could see that actually she's achieved so many extraordinary things, birth control, sex educator, writer, nurse. Nurse, she started as uh, working in New York uh, on the East Side. And this is what she encountered poverty and the difficulty women had in rearing children and uh, caring for their families. So she realized herself, she, uh, she, was, uh, she was coming from an Irish uh, numerous family. There were 11 children in total. So she realized how difficult it is for a woman to um, leave uh, with unrestricted uh, fertility and no access to birth control. So she got very early on engaged in this, which caused her a lot of trouble. We have a, a, an image here from 1929 when she's covering her mouth um, because she could not talk about birth control. The, the magazine she published, The Woman Rebel, was initially banned from distribution by US Postal Office because it, it violated the laws uh, against um, obscenity and so on and so forth. So that's a very important aspect of her life and probably something that all of us are aware of and remember and, uh, and, and uh, commend her for, which is the birth control movement. The other one uh, is the work she's done in terms of seeding uh, and planning um, their organization that later became Planned Parenthood Federation. Um, so we can see here uh, the World Congress that she organized in Geneva in 1927, the Population Congress, the first, and then the third one, uh, very important in Bombay in India, which led to the creation of the International Planned Parenthood Federation. Um, so these are two main aspects of her work amongst other things uh, that people always remember. But at the moment, of course, the discussion is whether her um, beliefs in eugenics and her racist comments um, should, should lead to a re-evaluation of a contribution to a uh, birth control movement uh, or worldwide. Yeah, so you mentioned the connection between birth control and eugenics. So, um, so how did uh, Sanger see this? 
she believed that birth control can achieve more than eugenics can. She endorsed eugenics. Uh, she saw it as part and parcel of the empowerment of women, of their emancipation. Feminism and eugenics were interlinked for her as much as birth control and eugenics were interlinked. She did believe that uh, there is similarity between the two movements. But birth control can actually do more than eugenics can. Birth control can stop all reproduction of unwanted individuals, uh, of unfit people, uh, can help get rid of poverty, can help emancipate the women um, who are having difficulties. So birth control is the most powerful way of dealing with uh, overpopulation. And eugenics was just part and parcel of that. Uh, birth control was in connection with eugenics control and in connection with population control. For her, that were all interlinked. Okay, so um, <clears throat> another form of eugenic birth control that would be uh, sterilization, one of the uh, more controversial measures in eugenic history. So Sanger's position on this. Yeah, she, she as many at the time, of course, um, particularly in America, she believed that voluntary sterilization can help. Although, of course, she thought that ultimately the emphasis eugenesis put on negative eugenics uh, is uh, is not leading to the outcomes she desired. So although she agreed that in some cases sterilization of the feeble-minded, of the unfit, may provide a solution, it's not the final uh, uh, answer to the overpop to overpopulation. The final answer and the program she wanted to uh, to uh, to have applied worldwide was birth control. So uh, ultimately, um, it could reduce the reproduction of certain uh, um, individuals, but sterilization will never be a solution to population control. Uh, so that's an important aspect of her thinking and how she um, interspersed her arguments about birth control with certain eugenic uh, and to our uh, sensibilities today, some very racist comments about certain groups of people, the poor, um, or uh, certain ethnic minorities, um, such as the blacks, and so on and so forth. So um, she saw that uh, for her, as for, for, for other people at the time, feminism, women emancipation, control of reproduction, and eugenics were all together part of a, way, a very progressive and forward-looking way of dealing with what they saw as the biggest problem of the 20th century, namely of a population. So as we bring it back to uh, to present day, um, so as you mentioned, a, a lot of the um, the the movement against sort of Sanger today is connecting to race and, and the Black Lives Matter. So yeah, do you have any uh, any thoughts on that? I've alluded to it. It is something that has to be done, and scholars have been doing this for a long time, revising and rewriting and re questioning. Uh, Margaret Sanger's connections to eugenics, to the eugenic movement, both in America and in Britain. She was very close to the British Eugenic Society. She was very close to certain uh, eugenicists in Britain. She learned a great deal about sexuality, uh, free love, and eugenics from Havelock Ellis, a person who influenced her greatly. Um, and also, there is a big connection between her and uh, certain uh, racist uh, um, um, ideas that circulated in the 1930s and 40s. To reevaluate that and to put it in the proper historical context is very healthy and has to be done um, within the bigger debate we have at the moment about renegotiating disruptions, about rereading certain canonical interpretation of the great figures of the 20th century. And she was certainly one of them. She is high there with the likes of uh, great uh, men and women of science and social uh, activism and uh, women's emancipation. Okay. Well, um, thank you, Marius, for another um, very interesting discussion. And uh, also thanks to um, everyone for watching the video or, or listening. So um, once again, thank you, Marius, and um, see you next time. Thank you, Patrick. Till next time.